Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. I want to take a walk through the garden tonight, harvest some vegetables, take a look and see what's growing, and I want to bring you along with me. So let's go take a walk. So last night it was super hot and I really needed to harvest my garlic scapes. So I did get that done. A whole bucket full of garlic scapes. I have way more garlic scapes than I need so I'm going to be finding some people to give these away to. I wish you guys were all local and I could share them with you because they're delicious. Hi Basil. And then this is the kitchen garden where we have our green stock planter right here. And then we've got these four raised beds, which Chris built just a couple weeks ago. I've got these cucumbers, which have been ravaged by cucumber beetles. As you can see, zinnias, lettuces, all kinds of yummy things in here. So it's looking really good. It hasn't been long at all since I planted this green stock, but everything in here is thriving. I do have some bolted mustard greens, but that's perfectly normal with this time of year. Um, everything else is growing really well. And you might be wondering what all this area is. So we are putting in a fire pit. We're hoping to finish this up this week and I'll be making a separate video all about this um, with Chris's help. So I'll be excited to share that with you guys. We really want to turn our backyard into an oasis where we can just spend tons of time. During this garden walk, you may see some droopy or sad looking plants. And that is because we've had a heat advisory for the third day in a row now. So it was like 90 today, 90 yesterday, 90 the day before, which might not seem super hot to you guys, but here in upstate Western New York, that's quite hot for us. It's also been extremely humid. So I just feel really gross being out here right now, but I really have missed spending time in the garden these past few days. So I'm picking a late time in the evening when it's starting to cool off a little bit, but it also means it feels more humid. One thing I am absolutely loving right now is the hygge culture bed. This time of year, this bed is always my favorite. It is so lush, so beautiful. This year I planted flowers and I planted annuals and I planted perennials. I even planted el an elderberry in here and everything is just taking off. So let me show you this beautiful bed. This lupin that I planted is absolutely gorgeous. This Buddha Cosmos is going nuts. I planted all kinds of things in this bed. Got the Egyptian walking onions, and watermelons, moon and star watermelons. Got soybean, squash. Let's see what's happening over here with this guy. There's a little baby squash. I don't remember what kind of squash this is, so I'll be surprised. Hi, Sage. I also have some calendula that's self-seeded. Love, love this calendula. This squash actually self-seeded. Um, I must have accidentally left, left some this year and I have no idea what it's gonna be. But have you ever seen anything more lush than this bed right here? It's so full. So, I do prune a lot of my tomatoes because we do get disease on our tomatoes. But just in this hygge culture bed, I always let a couple go wild. In my experience, they're super healthy and they don't get disease in this bed in particular until the end of the season. Um, they are cherries that I plant in here, so I don't plant any like paste tomatoes or any large tomatoes. I just noticed that they really don't get disease until the end. So it works out really well for, for my needs. I do need to harvest some broccoli because it has been getting so hot and um, I have noticed that the broccoli needs to be harvested because it is getting ready to bolt. So let's harvest some broccoli. This is 
smaller head right here. So I feel like I should harvest this head of cauliflower because we're going on vacation soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one. It's actually my first ever snowball cauliflower. too hot for me to have my hair down so I put it in a ponytail. I'm gonna go ahead and give these greens to the chickens because I did notice some caterpillars and stuff on them and they will really enjoy that little snack, especially in this heat that we've been having. Here we go, guys! They're having a blast with that. You guys getting all those bugs? So beautiful right now. Got these chickens too. Do you guys want a snack? I'm gonna give them some of these deadheaded roses. Oh, Japanese beetles. I'm gonna go ahead and give them this weed that was growing in the roses. So beautiful. We have this one right here that already lost petals this week is the perfect time for them to bloom because we are going away and the borage is looking lovely the hardy kiwi is also going nuts it's literally in this bed now these are um, yellow and raspberries and they're super super tasty so good. Pretty sure I have Japanese beetles flying in my hair. So poppies and borage are in bloom, calendula. Soon the gladiolas will bloom, probably in the next couple weeks. Cosmos are starting to bloom. Some Persian zinnias, a white zinnia, and then that pretty, oh, that's actually a calendula sneaking in there. A pretty red zinnia over there. And it looks like my pink lemonade cosmos are just about to bloom too right now it's just the orange and yellows i did make a big mistake when it came to the cut flower garden um one thing i didn't anticipate is i wouldn't have a nice view of the flower garden from the house so next year i'm going to actually move the cut flower garden and it's going to take place in our main vegetable vegetable garden instead so that's a change I'll be making next year. We're gonna turn that area over there into a berry patch. I do also have this section here all planted with flowers. Sunflowers, different kinds of sunflowers, amaranth and zinnias in the front here. As you can see, one's in bloom. So you can see my onions, corn is getting crazy. So the rule in New York is knee high by the 4th of July and this is this is chest high by the 4th of July, so I think we are going to be just fine when it comes to corn. And this is the second year my corn has really taken off, and I think that just goes to show you how um, nitrogen rich our soil has become from the root stout heavy mulching method. Over here I've actually pulled out a fair amount of stuff from the no dig bed, but it's still looking lovely. Lots of volunteer calendula, cilantro which has gone to seed, and onions from last year. I even got a carrot that went to seed and I'm just enjoying the beautiful blossoms from that. Some artichokes in here. Now I have had an issue with aphids and artichokes. That's why that artichoke looks so funny. Um, and you can see all the ants farming the aphids on the stalks. I don't like aphids destroying my plants, but I do let nature take its course when it comes to aphids because Oftentimes I do find that ladybugs come in and they take care of the problem on their own. So I just let nature do, do its thing. And I'm learning to really adopt that model when it comes to the garden because I just don't have time and capacity to handle the pest problems. So my hope and um, my yearning is that over time it will balance itself out. The one exception to that is the leak moth issues and um, our issues with cabbage moths. So we do use BT for those two pests and it makes a big difference in what we're able to harvest. Now there's no way I would be able to harvest 
broccoli or cauliflower or kohlrabi that looks this beautiful um, or that's that healthy if I did not use BT because trust me I have not used it in the past and I end up with nothing. One thing I am noticing in the no dig bed is it does need some fertilization. It is looking a little bit paler than I'd like to see. My zucchini and other beds are darker green. My tomatoes and other beds are darker green. I am packing so much food in these spaces and in the Ruth Stout beds where I have the um, rotted hay that's constantly fertilizing the plants, I don't have to worry about spacing. But in, in the no dig bed, I'm realizing that there just isn't enough nutrients on the soil to be constantly feeding the plants. So I am going to have to pay a little bit more attention to spacing or fertilizing on an ongoing basis. Take a look at this beautiful bed all these artichokes got brassicas sprinkled in some of my determinate tomatoes some peppers then some more tomatoes down there which I'll walk by and then my peas are filling out that trellis really nicely I do have to pick some peas so let's head over and do that I'll just walk you down this bed first Here's some more pest issues that I am constantly battling. The Colorado potato beetle has been really bad this year. Got the bulk of my peppers over here and they're looking really nice. Garlic everywhere. My Jardale pumpkins are filling out really nicely. They're going to be climbing this trellis really soon. I did come out here to do is harvest a number of these peas. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys down for a time lapse while I pick all these peas. These um, snap peas are much sweeter. These golden peas are much more productive. The golden peas are a hybrid the snap peas are an heirloom. So kind of get like the heirloom benefits from these guys being super flavorful and the production of the hybrid. As a gardener, when I come out here and I see all these things that need to get done and as a new mom, full-time worker, all the, the roles that I have in my life and I realize I just can't get to all of them does anyone feel like they're failing at stewarding their garden? I just sometimes feel like I'm failing, like I can't harvest all the peas and I can't take care of my tomatoes perfectly. Chris tries to remind me that none of this would, would exist if it wasn't for the work that I put into it. And so I should embrace all the things I do get done instead of being discouraged by the things I don't. But it just feels like I'm constantly inadequate in terms of stewarding my own space. I don't know if anyone feels that way, but if you do feel that way, you're not alone. Um, I do want to show you my eggplant real quick. We made these old low tunnels with PVC and um, greenhouse clips and Agrabon, which is a row cover. There's a big infestation of potato beetles on these. See what we can do about this. That is not good. That is super, super disappointing because um, I've never had an issue with potato beetles and eggplant. I've only had an issue with potato beetles on um, potatoes. I don't know what to do about this. I'm going to do some research tonight and figure out what to do. Um, but I'm going to open this up so that I can let some other pests, um, hopefully parasitic pests, come in to eat these Colorado potato beetles. So my short-term solution was just shaking the plants off and getting the Colorado potato beetles off the plants. I think I might come in here with some neem, neem oil tomorrow and spray all these plants really well to try to deter the Colorado potato beetles. I honestly don't mind them going after the potatoes because normally the potato plants can't handle it and they produce under the ground. 
But eggplants, it's just so early in the season for them to be getting hammered like this. And just look at the damage that's done on this. And this is like my only one of this variety right here. It's kind of what I mean in terms of feeling like I'm just failing at stewarding the garden because if I had checked earlier, if I had just come out here and checked earlier, if these guys weren't under row cover, maybe they would have stood a chance. And now I just feel like eggplant year is going to be bad. Okay, let's let's go take a look at something positive. Obviously, this guy is pretty pretty darn positive because if you have been following me for a while, you may remember like two and a half years ago, I made a video about um, how you kind of have to be willing to fail when it comes to gardening to succeed and to have those big wins. And I risked it and I decided to try artichokes. And the very first year I got an artichoke and you know, everyone said you can't grow artichokes in upstate New York, but I did. And I got artichokes and it was a wonderful and it was amazing. And now I have artichokes for the third year in a row. So that's a win. Do you guys remember me asking if you thought this peach tree would survive? I don't know. I'm thinking some positive things about this peach tree. It has a lot of new growth on it. See what happens, I guess. My medicinal herb garden is looking lovely. Got some bee balm. Echinacea is finally blooming. And then the yarrow is lovely. We're finally getting this original garden under control. Chris um, brush hogged over here. So we're gonna get that sheet mulched really soon. See, we've got some squash in here, different kinds of beans, um, and then sweet potatoes and melons in the back and everything's looking really good. And there's uh, some more potatoes in the back over there little mulberry tree that I um, dug up from someone's yard they they didn't want it anymore has mulberries for the first time Let's see one right there I'm gonna save this so Chris can try them he's never tried them before I don't think he's gonna like them very much but I'm gonna save it for him I, I don't know why but lately when I walk through the garden I feel so discouraged and I think I'm just too close sometimes I see things with such a critical eye and I do this to myself in all areas of life but when it comes to gardening I just see the flaws I need to be better about seeing the wins and the the beauties and the successes so I'd love to hear some encouragement from you guys I, th I feel like it would really help if you could just share with me something beautiful that you see in this space because I am just struggling and I'm just struggling to see the beauty I'm just seeing where I'm inadequate and where I'm falling short. I mean, objectively, I look at the space and I think, wow, look at all that food, look how beautiful it is. But when you're so close sometimes, you just you just have such a critical eye. I need to get out of that. Um, it's been an ongoing struggle of mine and I need to work on that. And I can see how beautiful it is and how much life is in here, especially that hygge culture bed. But sometimes I just get too close.